So we got a good idea of content. We got a pretty good idea of assets as well. Let's dive a little bit deeper and get more specific. We're gonna be looking at digital asset management and what that looks like here within LifeRay. The digital asset management world is going to be revolving around LifeRay's documents and media. We talked really briefly about documents and media and how that's the place that is going to be storing all of the files that we upload into LifeRay. So if you're uploading PDFs or music, documents, you name it, right? There's a pretty extensive list here of all the different things that you can upload into LifeRay. Once it's uploaded, it's going to be stored within LifeRay's documents and media repository, which again is unique for every site. So every site has its own documents and media repository that again, for the most part, stands independent from one another. So whatever you wanna upload into LifeRay, this is where it's gonna go, LifeRay's documents and media repository. Now we have a application within LifeRay that can help us with the syncing process of what may be on our machine and what might be on our computer. So we have a program called LifeRay Sync. LifeRay Sync works like any other syncing process you might have worked with, like Dropbox, for example. You have it on your computer, you got it on LifeRay, and it's gonna sync between the two. So whatever you put on your computer within LifeRay Sync, it's gonna be over in LifeRay DXP. So a pretty easy way to manage between different sources or computer to LifeRay. So we'll take a look at that a little bit more later on, just exposing you guys to that idea. Now, for many of us out there, we already have a bunch of content stored elsewhere. We might already be using a specific content repository, and we wanna bring those things into LifeRay. Uh, we can do that. Now, it's a little bit more technical, so depending on which, uh, repository you might be using, might need a little bit of help or a little bit of development work. Within the UI of LifeRay, it does provide a couple of easy ones here and there. One of the easy ones is if you're using a repository that follows the CMIS standard, so something like Alfresco, for example, then you can set that up through the UI, bring in the things from that CMIS repository, into LifeRay and you're on your way. So pretty straightforward if we're dealing with that. Again, we can integrate with other existing repositories that are out there. You are not just stuck or pigeonholed here. So if you're gonna follow the hookup to a CMIS repository, a couple of different things you got to configure along the way. Got to touch up some portal properties, right? We got to make sure there's a synchronization between the accounts here in LifeRay and over in the CMIS compliant repository, like Alfresco. And then as we are going through that, we're also gonna to wanna to add the repository to LifeRay's documents and media's home folder. So a couple of different things we need to consider there. All of that to say, yeah, it's doable. You can integrate with a third party repository for the most part. The amount of effort that it takes is a different story. Now let's jump back into what this looks like within LifeRay, just messing with our documents and media. Now, as we discussed in regards to assets, assets can be organized based off of folders. So documents and media or the documents that upload will be considered an asset. So because of that, right, you can organize them via folders. Now, the folders themselves can be permissioned so you can configure who is able to see inside of the folder and the individual files as well can also be configured in regards to their permissioning. All of that, I have to say, you got a lot of options here. Now, the upload process of the documents themselves can be a little bit daunting if you got thousands of documents. Luckily for us, you can upload multiple at the same time. So instead of a one by one, you can bring as many as you need at one time. Again, this depends on 
how you want to organize this and what you're looking to do. So you can create a folder, upload all the documents that you need into that folder, and then rinse and repeat. Let's talk about document types and providing some additional information to the files that we upload. Now, let's say, for example, uh, we are uploading, let's say music. Um, I really like music. So let's say I want to upload all of my MP3s into Liferay. So I go in, I get all my MP3s, and then I upload them. What Liferay is going to do is it's going to attach a specific document type to the MP3s that I'm uploading. What a document type allows us to do is to provide information about the files that we're uploading. So for example, I'm uploading music and I want a way within Liferay to better organize or classify my music, right? Music has a lot of uh, attributes to them, things like a title, uh, the artist, the duration, the genre, and so on. All of these different attributes in the content management world is known as metadata or information about the data that we are uploading in this situation. So all of the things that I listed, title, artist, and so on, that's all metadata, information describing my MP3s. I bring all of this up because we in Liferay can create a Liferay document type that attaches to the documents that we're uploading. We can then customize what sort of information we can fill out or what sort of metadata is gonna be attached to the file that we're uploading. So what I can do in Liferay is I can create a specific document type song, for example, and within that song document type, I can put a title field, an artist field, and so on, so that when I upload my MP3, I can spend the time to add that metadata to my music. So that's what a Liferay document type does. It's kind of like a, a cover letter or an attachment to the files that we upload so that we can add information about that specific file. With all of that, right, document types or adding a document type to the files we upload gives us a lot of different things that we can do. We can group all of the documents or all of the files based off of the document type. And uh, there's a lot of other cool features like workflow that we can take advantage of a little bit later. Again, all of that to say, when we upload things into Liferay, we can attach a document type to the file to better uh, organize and describe that file that we're uploading. So let's take a look at this. In this example, right, we might have a couple of PDFs that contain information about the employees that we have at our respective companies. These documents can be pretty big, right? It has a lot of information there their name, their address, their phone number, their employee ID, their social security number, their favorite pizza, so on and so forth. So instead of having to go through and look through this massive PDF to get some easy information, what we can do instead is create a document type as we see right here. This document type can have a couple of fields that we can have the uploader fill out. So that way, when I look at the employee record, I can really quickly just look at those fields, right? Oh, this is Felicity's document. This is her employee ID. I don't actually need to go into the PDF or the document itself, the file, to get the easy info. We have this Liferay document type that has it for us. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna create the document type itself. We're gonna add a couple of fields there a name field and an employee ID field, right? We'll create that document type and we'll eventually see it in action. We'll add a couple more here, right? Address, date of birth, job title. Again, this is just metadata that we are adding in the Liferay world, right? The actual file document itself already has these things, right? So we're gonna create the document type, add a couple of different fields there, after that, we're gonna create a folder to better sort or better organize these employee records. So we'll create the folder in the documents and media. We will then create or rather upload the employee record. And as we upload it, we're going to be adding the employee record document type 
to the file that we are uploading. From there, fill out the fields and then we're good to go. Now, just as with content in general, right? If I create a document type within a specific site, that's the only place it's gonna be in that specific site. What if I wanna expose this document type to every site within Liferay? Uh, lucky for us, we can do that. Uh, over in the fundamentals course, we talked briefly about the global site. Uh, if you don't remember, that's okay. The global site, again, is a site that when we upload content into that site, it's made available to all of my sites. So what I can do is create a document type within the global site, and then that document type will then be available to the rest of my sites. So we'll take a look at that, right? We're gonna import a document type into that global site or global context. And then from there, we'll go to a specific site and then add a document and fill out the document type. So we'll get a flavor, get a taste of both aspects. What is it gonna look like on a specific site? And then what's it gonna look like at the global level? So before we jump to that exercise, let's go ahead and take a look at our summary highlighting some of our key points. So life rays, documents and media, this is where we can store all types of documents or files. Again, whatever we upload into life ray, MP3s, PDFs, Excel sheets, it's gonna be stored within that section, within that repository, documents and media, right? We can create a link between a virtual shared drive and life ray using life ray sync. So documents and media can act as a virtual drive using Liferay Sync. Liferay can be connected with existing CMIS repositories. In the context of this course, this is the things that we are able to do. Uh, if you wanna do something more complex, you might need a little bit of development work. Users can manage documents by creating and using document folders. Again, folders function just as we imagine on our operating systems, Got a little bit more to them. Finally, last bullet point here, users can also create document types, sets of metadata to organize and search for documents. So these are the main points that we hit along the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at those exercises. I'm gonna pass it over to Brandon where he will show you guys that.